Step into the realm of the extraordinary with Paranormal M. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest mind-bending stories. We hope you're prepared for an expedition beyond the ordinary. Ask Reddit 1. I would never ever think that he would make something like that up, just for the sake of impressing someone. And since this has been told to me more than a year ago, I don't know the exact details anymore either. But if you have questions, go ahead. Maybe I can answer them. This happened during his time of mandatory duty at the Bundeswehr in Germany. So this happened at least 35 or 40 years ago. He had night watch in an old building used mainly for storage. He explained the building as mostly empty too, but something needed to be there to be guarded. So because it was still on a military property, after all. The building consisted of a smaller ground floor and a bigger basement floor. When you walked in, there was a little entrance area with a small guard office on the side, with a big window. And after that entrance area, you had to open a door to access the rest of the building. You also needed a key for that door, which... Usually only higher-ups and the soldiers on night duty had in possession. Including the staircase down to the basement. Since the building was mostly empty, it was a very boring night watch. Which made my friend's father to bring a book with him most of the time to kill that time. Anyways, an hour or so into the shift, he heard the noise of someone in the basement slamming one of the doors shut. He thought someone from his comrades were trying to scare or prank him, and he checked out every single room down there. He didn't find anyone meaning that there was nothing anyone could have been hiding behind or so. The basement was basically just a single hallway, with metal doors to the left and right, and only one entrance, the staircase. The rooms down there were just small, simple rooms without any weird shapes. He brushed it off as an imagination and went back to his desk, locking the staircase and checking on the lock of the entrance. A while after, he heard the noise again, and he called the general in charge, or just someone higher up in hierarchy. And he reported a potential security threat. Or just some prankster comrades, perhaps. The higher-up guy was on the stricter side and was willing to find and punish any soldiers that were in the building because they kind of auto-obviously didn't have permission to be there at this hour. Due to the potential security threat, he also brought some of the army dog squad over to search the building thoroughly. At this point in the storytelling, I began to get goosebumps. Fully and well-trained army dogs were growling and refusing to enter the building, let alone get near it. They searched the whole building with nothing to be found inside. Checked every single room, checked every window and lock, nothing. My friend's father then was ordered to continue his shift and the search party went off again. After some time, he heard the banging again, and all the locks were still locked. There was only one entrance to the building, and anyone entering must have walked past his window and locked the door, which wouldn't have been possible to do without him noticing. Anyways, he got stressed as well and went downstairs and checked the room once again with the same results like the last time. Then he had an idea. He closed every single door in the basement, took out a box with matches, and put a match on every door handle and left again. Of course, he heard the slamming noises again, and once he checked down there, one or two doors were flung wide open and several matches fell off the door handles from the other doors. 
He was very confused and went back to his book for the rest of that shift, trying to ignore the activity down there. No one had ever experienced this before, and he never had to do night shift there again, due to the building getting teared down shortly after that. He never really believed into ghosts and paranormal activities, but this night really changed his opinion on the subject. I saw a ghost truck. So this was two years ago. England, in January 1st. I'm a 22-year-old female in this story. I had a severe workplace accident and was rushed to the hospital, had a concussion and some nerve damage in my back. A few days later, I could go home and my mom, 50, picked me up. She picked me up around 9 p.m., and her house is around two hours away, so it was pretty dark. My mom had always said that she felt odd when driving on a specific stretch of road, but I never thought anything of it because I already knew that she hated driving at night. She gets the creeps easily. Anyway, we saw a bright red car take over our car, and they were going pretty fast. But nothing was coming towards us, and like I said, it was a straight road. So not that dangerous, all things considered. But as it was alongside of us, we saw it go through a misty white truck coming towards it. I gasped and covered my eyes, expecting impact. But nothing. The car just got carried on like nothing happened. My first instinct was, okay, calm down, you have a concussion, you're seeing shit, right? I look over, and my mom, no pun intended, looks like she's seen a ghost. Even though the car was pretty dim, I could see her knuckles tight on the wheel and her eyes are wide. I'm almost certain if the road wasn't straight, we would have crashed because I've never seen her that shocked before. I asked, did you see what I saw? And without hesitation, she said, that car just went through a truck. We both were pretty quiet on the way home, although I noticed that she put on the radio, probably to distract her, and she all but jogged into the house from the driveway. All things considered, I still can't explain what we saw. My mum refuses to use that road whenever possible. We've talked about it since, but really can't wrap our heads around it. Ask Reddit. Moved into a rental. Real estate agent asked us, do we really want it? And warned us of a quote-unquote entity as he showed us pictures of the exiting report for previous tenants and the entry report for us. Big black orb in different spots in the pictures, but followed him around as he took those pics. We, of course, didn't care. Didn't get bad vibes. A few months of living there, felt something like something else was there without seeing them. Hearing our names being called, and no one was calling them. Then one day, looking down the hallway to the laundry, a little girl was standing there. Half her face seemed like it was burnt, and half her hair missing as well. Ran off behind the door into the wall. Nowhere to go. Checked. Nothing. Inspection came up. Real estate agent told us that... It was the previous tenant's daughter who died in a fire at their previous house before moving in here. Guess she didn't know they moved and stuck around. Well, always happy to feel her presence and see her in the days and months and years after. Same house. A man in the 1900s, trench coat and a hat. Always bending down and turning her TV on and off. Only when we were never in the room, 
and always when we were walking past and looked in. Different home. Snow town. Murder's house. I believe it was anyway, as it was around that time in the same area, somewhat missing. Grave size hole in the backyard. Perfect rectangle. Inch of grass at the top. Dug underneath and found about 20 centimeters of dirt, then colored cement, the same color of the black cupboard that was there when we moved in. Knocking in the walls constantly, names being called again. Easy feeling. Kids' footprints on the walls, even after we washed it. Dirt in our vacuum from places that we never cleaned with a vacuum. That house we moved into, basically as the last person was gone, left it as it was. A mattress had blood handprints on it and a drawer next to that bed with a knife in it and blood all over it. Blood splatter on the curtains, only noticing it when we closed them and gradually seeing a lot more blood around the house as we lived there and took notice. Gnome? Nissy? What do you think they are? Plus a personal story. I have so many questions I'd love to discuss. Do they exist? Are they natural creatures and spirits or interdimensional beings, aliens, jinn? And are they good, bad, or indifferent? Why do they appear in folklore across the world and in unrelated cultures? I hope you enjoy my comment, pasted below. I'd love to hear your stories or cultural beliefs about them. Man, I'm so shy to share, because it really seems far-fetched. It was towards Christmas time, important later, and my spouse and I were hanging out at home. I looked up, still in the house, and saw him standing there. He looked just like a stereotypical garden gnome, red cap, beard and all. My memory is that his eyes got a little wide when he saw me looking, and he gave me what seemed like a jaunty little wave and a smile. Anyway, I turned to get my spouse's attention to see if he could see it too. When I looked back, he disappeared. I searched the whole house trying to prove to myself that I didn't imagine it. My spouse, being Norwegian, believes that it was a Tom Tennessee. Excuse my pronunciation. Tom Tennessee, maybe. Which is why I mention it being Christmas time. I've questioned myself thousands of times since, but I wasn't asleep, impaired in any way, or have a tendency to hallucinate. One reason we might have attracted one, if it was real, is that we've always left a plate out for any creature on New Year's Eve. Typically a sweet, a little pickled herring and a drink of some sort. But just to be friendly. I usually leave out a needle and thread as well so they could repair their clothes. In the morning, I take the remains outside for scavengers. I kind of saw it as a harmless little tradition that my husband's family does but I'm a little more deliberate about not forgetting to leave it out these days. So, that's my story. I'm not convinced that it's logical in any way, but I do like the idea of there being a little magic left in this world, huh? I have no idea what I just witnessed. Not safe for work. I just noted it, so watch out. So I'm driving to my boyfriend's house around 5 a.m., and he lives in the somewhat boonies. Definitely not somewhere people are casually walking around at 5 a.m. So I'm probably 10 minutes from his house and going about 25 miles an hour because the deer are out, and they're pretty curvy roads. 
I get around this corner and I see someone standing by the road. As I get closer, I can see the back of a tall older man. And as I'm passing by, there's a younger teenager, a girl next to him. What really threw me off was that what they were doing. The man was faced towards the girl, but standing completely still and not saying anything. Like not moving at all, just a blank stare. The girl was the exact same, but staring towards the road, facing me. But she wasn't looking at me. She was looking past me. Her eyes didn't even move. I don't know how to explain it, but something was really off. The man was wearing a t-shirt and shorts, and the younger girl was wearing normal day clothes. The entire situation was chilling. They didn't seem human. Something about them was so off-putting that as soon as I saw them, my stomach just dropped, and I just felt this overwhelming rush of, I'm gonna die. I was shaking. It's like an instinct kicked in that something was really, really wrong. So I sped the rest of the way as fast as I could around the corner. All I could think of was getting to the house faster and the awful feeling of being chased. I basically flew out of the car when I arrived and locked all the doors. One of the times I was homeless, this might have been 2015, it had been about eight months and I'd gotten into the swing of being homeless, like I had a routine of what I would do and whatever. One day I'm sitting beside this construction yard, waiting for the dealer to come by, and this random dude comes out of nowhere. He starts talking crazy talk, like immediately. I realize there's something wrong with this guy, mentally. Just his actions, and the way that he was move his head, and the way that he spoke, sort of like a deaf person, told me something was wrong with him. But we spoke for a while, and he started getting into this story about aliens and UFOs. And that's my kind of shit. So I'm like, nice. And he sees I get kind of visibly excited about talking to him, and he starts drawing on the sand on the floor. I used to play a lot of Kerbal Space Program, and I know a bit about the stars, and I realize this dude is 100% correct in all the things that he's saying. He drew the... the pl... pl I can't say this. The pl... pl Pleiades. Pleiades. He drew the Pleiades, then drew Earth and explained how one can go from here to there, using correct terminology and everything. Apoopsis, periopsis, gravity term, etc. But then he points to the spot in the middle between Earth and Pleiades and says, but this is where they stop you if you try to go. Now I'm super interested, and I'm like, who? He says they're people with metal wings who travel without a spaceship. And when they're down to Earth, they fly and land like birds, and then their wings turn to bone and flesh, and they become arms. And if they stay too long, their bones inside their arms become rock, and they can't fly anymore. So they choose to do evil things to draw attention until they come get fetched by the others. He starts drawing weird symbols and shapes and things on the sand. And he starts getting like fruit loopy and starts kind of grabbing me and shouting and getting weird with me. So I get defensive. He jumps up and says, do you want to see what they did to me? He jumps up, turns around, pulls his pants down, and his whole ass from like upper thigh to lower back is just one big open wound. Ugh. 
It's literally just meat and blood and pus. This one should have said not safe for work. And I'm like, fucking dude, you have to go to the fucking hospital. But he says, no, they won't be able to help him. And now I'm like freaking out a little bit because this is clearly someone with serious issues who's hurt or been hurt or something. And I need to do something or get away or something. My dealer finally arrived just at the right time. I say goodbye and take off. And I'm like, what the fuck? What am I supposed to do? My dealer and I both know all the faces from around this area, and we both don't know this guy. Anyway, I come back around this area a couple minutes later, and he's gone. I end up spending the night inside a big concrete pipe in a construction yard, about a hundred meters away from where all this took place. It's like 2 a.m. I'm sitting there smoking meth in the dark. Definitely should be not safe for work, one when I hear the most intense blood-curdling scream you've ever heard, and shouting, No, no, please! I could recognize his voice. I come crawling out of the pipe. There's another homeless dude who I know, also coming crawling out of the dark, just outside the construction yard. We both recognize each other, and I'm like, Dude, what the fuck should we do? He immediately turns away and says that we should leave. All the while, this guy is still screaming just up the road. My buddy takes off into the darkness, and I stand there for a few seconds, and I see two human-sized things. Literally looked like people with wings taking off into the sky, and vanishing almost instantly. The screaming stops. I'm trying to figure out if my eyes are playing tricks on me. If it's not, because maybe I'm hallucinating because of the meth, I don't know. I decide to go check on him, and there's literally just a pile of his clothes and his shoes where he was sitting. Same places earlier. Never heard from or saw him again. Neither did my other homeless buddy. Nothing. I think about that dude quite a bit. Ask Reddit. So one night I'm about to go to sleep, and I stare out my window in boredom, as I have terrible insomnia. I hear something moving, like a rat. I assumed it was a rat, as we did have a rat problem at the time, but it sounded just different enough to be something else. Went on for a while. Eventually, I ask if it was a spirit as the noise got louder. Suddenly, I hear knocks against my window. I look out and the knocks stop. There was no one there. Of course, it could have just been dark and I might have just been, a, you know, experiencing a coincidence. And I think to myself as I'm trying to deny what happened. All my family was asleep that night. So it couldn't have been any of them. I tried to think of the people that it could have been. Why is this relevant, you ask? Because about five seconds later, I hear the same knocking on my door. I go to peek out, but nothing's there and the lights in the hallway are off. At this point, I decide to stay in my bed underneath the covers out of fear. When I hear the knocking a third time and final time, It was coming from my closed closet door. No one could have gotten into my room. Even when I opened the door, I only opened it enough to get a good look at the hallway. The reason I don't think it's a prank is because that day I spent like 90% of my time in my room. If someone were to sneak into my closet and knock from the inside, they would have had to be in my closet for at least a few hours minimum. I would have also had to hear them leave my room, which I didn't hear the entire rest of the night. I do believe it was a spirit, as I did ask if someone was there.
I don't know what this was, but it scared the heck out of me. So this happened about a year ago. I told my parents about the window one, but I thought I was being stalked. I did tell my other parent about the party one, but my stepmom said that it wasn't actually a person, and my dad laughed because he thought that we were just joking. I didn't tell anyone about the other one. I don't know if this counts, but there have been a couple of times that I've seen paranormal things. The first time I was at my birthday party, we were talking like, you know, 12 at night, and we heard scratching and something circling the tent. Then my boyfriend at the time looked out all the windows in the tent. Context, we were sleeping outside the house in my dad's tent. And he yelled out, Whoever's there, fuck off! And then proceeded to look at the rest of the windows. And on the last one, on the other side of the trampoline, there was a black figure, crouched, sort of sitting there. He said, fuck! and closed the window as quickly as humanly possible. Then, about two months later, I was turning over to get comfortable, and I caught a glimpse of a black face pressed against my window. I turned to look again, and yeah, there was a black figure looking in my window. So I turned around and pretended not to see it. The thing is, is that the window was very close to the back door, and those doors aren't locked. As are pretty much any in our house. So I went to sleep and tried not to think about it. But then about two months after, I was trying to sleep at my mom's house and I was thinking of all the people and the pets that have died that I loved. And my headphones were sitting on my laptop, right? And I had my back to the desk where all my stuff was. And suddenly I hear a crash. Not that loud, but just the sound of something falling. I turn around and my headphones are lying on the ground. The next night I was facing my desk. All the stuff I put on the desk. And I'm facing the desk and one of the ear parts of the headphones moved a bit towards the edge. So I freaked out and got up and thought to myself, nope, nope, nuh uh, not in the mood for this. That was my gecko. So I picked up the headphones off the laptop and placed them on the ground. I have no explanation for any of these. The body of the figure at my birthday party was pitch black. The face in my window was pitch black. There was no reason for my headphones to be moving. No explanation. Please, somebody tell me if this means that I'm haunted or something. I'm scared. Skeptic, having a hard time wrapping my head around this experience. I'm a skeptic, though I used to be obsessed with ghosts, and even ghost hunting for years with my sister. I'm older now, and stopped really believing in ghosts over ten years ago. My fiancé and I have always joked that we have a ghost in our apartment, because I found out after moving that a man who used to live in the apartment died here. He would say that, or we would say, that we could feel someone watching us, that he was just another roommate. About a week ago, we acquired some furniture and belongings through one of our co-workers. The woman who originally owned the belongings had passed away, very sadly, and was a member of my co-worker's mom's church. Co-worker's mom was working hard to donate her friend's belongings and take care of the house out of respect for her. It was a really kind thing, and my fiancé and I loved that these women were doing so much for this woman who didn't have anything else when she passed away. My fiancé and I acquired the sofa, some lamps, an old jewelry box, and vintage clip-on earrings, an entertainment stand, and a very old antique black and white TV. She was a big antique collector. We began joking that we probably have two ghosts now, and a new roommate. Then last night happened. It's only my fiancé, me, and our huge cat Nacho, who lived in the apartment. 
I woke up to use the restroom at about 3.30 a.m. When I got back to bed, my cat came and laid down on my chest and we were cuddling for about five minutes or so. When I heard a loud noise outside her door, which was open, my fiancé didn't hear as he was laying on his good ear, deaf in the other. And I woke him up by being startled and I said, What was that? Did you hear that? To which he replied, No, I was lying on my good ear. To which I replied, There was a loud sound outside the bedroom. What do you think it was? He shrugged, and all he said was, The ghosts, before falling back to sleep. I got up and walked out of the bedroom to where the noise came from and saw what it was. My fiancé has a big medical-style bag that he uses for all his work supplies, tools, and things like that. When he comes home, he always sets it onto the lidded trash can that we have in the hallway outside the bedroom. It's a clean and new trash can from the apartment complex, and hasn't been used yet, so not gross. What I had heard was that heavy bag fall off the light plastic trash can that it was sitting on. I found it lying upside down on the floor in front of the trash can with some of the tools spread out on the hardwood floor. I picked everything up and decided to place the bag on the sofa instead and go back to bed. I did simulations with the trash can and the bag when my fiancé got home, as well as studied everything in the surrounding area, and after countless tries and tests, I feel that the way it fell could only have been done deliberately. My fiancé says that it's our ghosts. I'm still a skeptic at the end of the day, and I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around this. The Wounded Warrior It's just past 2 a.m. And currently, as I type this, sitting in the middle of a remote field in North Carolina, without giving too much detail, I'm in the military. You can infer as to which branch and base on your own. And my buddy, I'll just call him Eddie, and I were helping conduct a field exercise. We're not the ones training. We're the ones that get to sit in the field from 10 p.m. to 9 a.m. freezing our asses off and reading a pre-written script over the radio every 15 to 30 minutes so that the guys working up for deployment can practice listening to enemy comms. After our last comm window, I call up my buddy at the other far end of the LZ to check in on him. I'd mentioned that as we had such frequent radio checks scheduled throughout the night, though the time stretched to about an hour apart at this point, and it was suggested that we try to get some sleep, I don't really trust myself to fall asleep because I regularly sleep through alarms or just autopilot hit the snooze button like some half-conscious zombie. That's when he tells me, Oh, trust me, I ain't sleeping tonight. And the way he said it seemed odd. Not like he was agreeing. He was just afraid to sleep through his alarms. But like there is an entirely different reason that maybe he'd be pulling an all-nighter. So naturally I asked him why, and now I'm really wishing I hadn't. He goes on to describe seeing a person walking up to him from the tall grass, thinking it was simply one of the guys doing dismounted reconnaissance, and just not being very stealthy, he shined his headlamp on him. What he saw was a guy in a full kit wearing old BDUs with his left arm missing and his head hanging lazily on his shoulder as if it had been blown most off, pretty much most of the way off. Eddie says the guy didn't look at him at all and walked straight into the tree line. He claims 
to have seen him as clear as day. Now, Eddie and I aren't super close, but we are work friends. That said, we don't exactly have the dynamic to mess with each other like this, and I've never known him to be disingenuous. He sounded noticeably shaken, and I have no reason not to believe him. I've always believed in the supernatural to at least some extent, though to which I'm not quite sure. Though I've never really seen a ghost or anything out of the ordinary, to tell you the truth. If I had, I surely didn't notice it. I've always wondered why some people seem to be so lucky where I was not. I sort of wondered this aloud on the phone with Eddie noting that I'd either been on my phone or reading my book all night in between comm windows. Eddie suggested I keep reading or distracting myself in some manner, as the whole ordeal left him practically shitting his pants. Part of me is sort of just jealous of him, if I'm being completely honest. I've always thought it'd be really cool to see something like that. Another part of me hopes I continue on with my night in blissful ignorance, peacefully unaware of the things that go bump in the night. If you made it this far, thanks for reading. At first, my only concern was sleeping through my alarms. Now I've got a whole new reason as to why I'll be wide awake. Thanks, Eddie. My granddaddy acted very unusual the day before his unexpected death. I just wanted y'all's thoughts on this, so my granddaddy unexpectedly passed away two years ago. My grandmother and his wife, who I call Nan Nan, told us on the day of his death, that night before he told her that he heard folks outside in the roof. They lived out in the country near me, and we live in the middle of nowhere. She said it spooked him enough to go outside with a gun and a flashlight looking around. He found nothing. The day of his death, she said that she was at Harvey's supermarket walking out and randomly shows up and motions for her to come to him. She said they small talked for a minute. Then when she was leaving to go, she said she grabbed her hand and wouldn't let go for a while and said, I'll see you at the house. He was not a romantic or sensual guy at all. So this was very out of character for him. About 30 minutes later, she got a call saying he was dead. The EMTs say that he thinks that he had died going over a bridge to the interstate. And then his truck rolled over the bank and off to the side of the interstate. So it wasn't a collision that caused him to die. I don't like to talk to Nan Nan because it just gets so worked up. But I'd just like to hear some of y'all's thoughts about that. I thought those were very strange experiences. He also died alone, which is the saddest part. So no one really knows exactly what happened. Ask Reddit. It was a fall night and I was at my sister's boyfriend's house. My older sister and her two friends were gathered around the fireplace. We all were chatting, and I was trying to hide my excitement. I was 14 and felt cool hanging out with everybody. They all stood while I sat at the end of the kitchen table, where I could see into the living room on the other side of the fireplace. I did note something in the corner of my eye. I was interested in the conversation, and it wasn't until I began to sort of seize that I bothered to look. Unexpectedly, my eyes locked eyes with another pair that glared parallel in my direction. The small eyes of a little boy were peering back into mine. He was sitting in a chair, hands folded in his lap. Although shocked, I remember he was wearing a little cap and overalls or suspenders of some sort. He also had a blank expression. 
I could see him clearly, and he was colorless. I stared into his eyes, paralyzed by fear. Time seemed to be unreal until I felt a weight on my chest. I grabbed my heart as I turned away from him and struggled for my breath a good ten seconds. All at once I felt all the pain release, and it literally brought me to tears. I leapt from my chair in desperation, and all I could get out was, Little boy, little boy! My sister was confused and asked what? I told her, There's a little boy sitting in the chair in the living room. I was a wreck as I hesitantly watched my sister lean over and look in that direction. I don't see a little boy, she said confidently. So much so, I questioned my own sanity. I peered once again, hoping I would see nothing. I looked back into his expression that he had, and he remained in the same position and had not moved a muscle. I was horrified, and this time I completely got away from sight of him. I pleaded to my big sister once more, You don't see him? She never did. It wasn't until later on that night that I dared to walk by that spot again, and the aspiration was no longer there. Six years later, I haven't experienced anything like it since. Yet, there is an explanation for this story. Her boyfriend's dad was an older man that lived in the old farmhouse his whole life. He shared with us years later that he had an older brother that he never met because it He passed due to an illness at a very young age. Just so happens, what is now the living room was the little boy's bedroom in the past. My sister is now married to her then boyfriend, and his father passed away recently. The house is cute and turned a hundred recently. I find eerie how there was a collection of paranormal events there in the past. Yet, nowadays, it seems quiet. I guess the spirit is happy. My Bedroom Door My name is Magnolia. I'm 15 years old. A couple days ago, I've been hearing banging on my bedroom door. Banging to knocking and someone talking outside my bedroom. I've not watched any stuff to form these hallucinations. It was just a regular day. I'm laying down, ready to fall asleep, and I hear a bang on my door. I ignore it, thinking that something probably fell in the living room. Nope, it wasn't my dog. My mom always brings my dog with her upstairs to her room whenever she's about to sleep. The speaking I hear is like a woman talking to me specifically. The thing is, whenever my mom knocks on my door, she always calls my name. If she doesn't, I'd have to get up, open my door, and leave the room, which happens rarely. This was late at night. I was too lazy to get up out of bed, so I decided to message my mom asking what she wants. She was clearly confused, saying that she was upstairs with the dog watching TV. So she's clearly with my dog. It's me only up here and my mom in the house. Every night until now, I hear knocking from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Not just the little bangs, but clear, hard knocking, indicating somebody wants the door open. I've hung a rosary on my doorknob, and it swings around and around. Encounter in the Mojave I live in rural southern Nevada. A buddy of mine and I encountered what we decided to be a skinwalker one night while we were sharing a bottle of whiskey. It was late. I was sort of living on the edge of town, fairly close to the open desert. 
I don't remember the time. I'd estimate between 12 or 2 a.m. A buddy of mine comes over and decides to spend the night drinking and hanging out with me. We were in the living room sitting near the side of the house, right next to a couple of closed and blinded windows. We'd been on the topic of paranormal and cryptids when we began discussing Navajo and Southern Paiute skinwalker lore. We're about an hour in on that topic, and about a quarter into the fifth I had, swimmy but not quite drunk drunk, when we began hearing a faint but distinguishable pitter-patter directly outside the window, pacing back and forth the length of the house. We were buzzing enough to semi-dismiss it until we began to hear hyena-esque cackling. At that point, we figured that we had maybe attracted one to us by speaking of them, which is a staple of their lore, by the way. So we decided the best course would be to not acknowledge it and carry on our conversation until it left. The paw-like pacing and cackling continued another 45 minutes or so, and then eventually stopped. Neither one of us were willing to open the blinds or go outside until morning. But when we woke up and went outside, not only did we see dog prints lining the dirt directly outside of the windows, we saw a set of abnormally large human-like footprints that ran from the near carport to the center of the yard before the tracks stopped dead. And each footprint was smaller and less imprinted. I think I have a guardian angel. My mom always told me I have a guardian angel. For context, I'm an only child. My mom had three miscarriages and one stillbirth before she had me. Growing up, this is a story that she told me. When my mom was pregnant with me, she was coming home from work and almost walked right in front of a moving truck when something pulled her from behind back onto the sidewalk. There was no one else around. I always thought this was maybe a cute little family story until recently. When I was 14 and young and stupid, I had a friend stay over. She had brought some of her parents' booze and we got really wasted. We then had the smart idea to take my mom's car for a joyride. Fast forward about 40 minutes when we were speeding down the highway in the middle of the night at well over 200 miles an hour. Next thing I know, the car swerves, flips upwards, and rolls five times into a ditch. The car was completely totaled. My friend and I crawled out of the car and were basically unharmed save a few scratches and bruises. We ended up hitchhiking back home with some pretty sketchy guys who turned out to be pretty chill. They dropped us off at my house, and even gave us a pack of cigarettes. The next morning, my mom saw the car was gone, and called the police to report it stolen. When the police found the car, they told my mom that, judging by the state of the car, whoever was inside should be dead. I never stopped to think that maybe something that night was watching over me till about a week ago. My grandma was sick and dying from cancer. She decided that she wanted to be at home for those last few weeks. She died just over a week ago. The day before she died, I was sitting next to her bed, just reading the news to her, and I thought she was asleep. She rolled over, eyes open, looked at me and said, Who's that? I said, Grandma, it's me. And she said, Who is that person standing behind you? My blood ran cold. And I said, Grandma, there's no one else here. It's just me and you. And she rolled over and fell back asleep. That really freaked me out. 
Then I remember the story my mom told me, and how I should have died in the car accident when I was 14. My grandma was on a lot of drugs at that time, but I believe she saw something. So yeah, I have a guardian angel. Something that's been with me since I was born, and I think about it. The Farm in My Nightmares For my entire life, I'm a 31-year-old male. My grandparents' farm on my mom's side has been very frequent and reoccurring spot that pops up in my nightmares. I've yet to have a dream where there isn't a really bad vibe in it. As a kid and early teen, I always thought it was simply because of my dislike for going to that farm. That changed when I was 18. I was working late with my mom for my uncle's cleaning company. We got home at 3 a.m., and one thing that we could do at least once a week is have a good 30 minutes where we just chat while parked in the driveway. This night, she started sharing some of her own ghost experiences. She's very sensitive to the spirit world. I had heard some of her stories before, but she started going really deep. One of my uncles used to be a Satan worshiper as a teenager. He had bought sneakily every book that he could buy on the subject, and he had managed to buy a Ouija board too. He did a lot of satanic stuff within the house. And when my grandpa discovered it, he burned all the books and the Ouija board only to seem to unleash the spirits on the house with greater force, and the Ouija board kept reappearing, refusing to be destroyed. Some of the stories she told me seemed to come right out of a horror film, such as evil spirits stomping in the upstairs and dragging furniture, or driving them completely out of the house, and pushing the family car with kids in it clear out of the farm and onto the road. There was also, back in the 1910s or so, a horse thief that was hung on the property, and before he hung, he was told that he would never find peace. And so, supposedly, his soul is still on the property. But ever since I learned this, whether I believe all the stories or not, I'm religious and I've had my own experiences with the spiritual and paranormal side. I have been convinced that even though they've had blessings and cleansing of the house, that there is enough of an echo there of it still, that it might be why I have nightmares associated with it for over three decades. thought she was my mom. We moved into the house that my parents are still living in back in October of 1999. I was nine at the time, but I'd be ten by the end of the year. The age doesn't really have anything to do with the story, just the necessary background information. Anywho, my mom has always been very in tune with the other side. She isn't quite medium level in her intuition with the other side, but she has always been able to immediately detect visitors from the other side and the intentions that they have towards her, specifically towards her, I guess, and a more general impression on the general nature, whether it be good or bad. My dad is also pretty open to it, and he's seen some stuff too just nowhere to the extent my mom has. So I've always been open to the possibility of ghosts. It helps that my family is very religious and therefore have an acceptance of the afterlife and the concept. Nothing really happened spirit-wise until my little brother was born in 2001. This was after I had been diagnosed with leukemia that same year. My parents had gotten a small wooden cradle from my grandparents, 
and after my little brother was born, they put him in it in their room. They would put him to sleep and come back later and check on him to find the cradle being rocked back and forth. He was still a newborn, so he couldn't have rocked himself. My mom, after the third time, identified it as a woman, probably the wife of the man who built the house. There's a cement step in the walkway to the side door that has the number 1963 on it, indicating when it was built. She believed that this ghost mom had taken upon herself the duty of tending to my little newborn brother if my parents weren't next to him. When the grandmother wasn't tending to my little brother, or ghost mother, we would occasionally see lights flicker or dim for a few minutes before coming back on full. Nothing hostile, and my mom and dad seemed to welcome this visitor, who probably was one of the original owners of the place. Two years after brother's birth, my baby sister was born. Same thing happened. Whenever they would take her out of her cradle, or sorry, I think they mean whenever they would be out and she was in her cradle, it would be rocked by this ghost mother. Now I was kind of skeptical, even though I accepted the possibility of it. I chalked much of it up to the house being over 40 years old. Then I was turned 14, and my skepticism was broken for certain. I want to say it was late spring, and I woke up around 2 a.m. I had to go to the bathroom. There's only one bathroom in the house, and it's across the hall from the master bedroom. So I went upstairs and paid tribute to the porcelain gods. As I got out, I saw a woman in an off-pink nightgown with faded flowers on it, hair down to the shoulders. Obviously, I assumed it was my mom. She looked a little bit different, but it was two in the morning. She also had a similar nightgown. She was standing in the doorway of my parents' bedroom, door open. That wasn't odd, as my parents always slept with one of the doors open. Years of tending to me, because of my cancer, and my little brother who was allergic to almost everything, had taught them to sleep with the door open. I was actually surprised to see her. My mom worked graveyard as a janitor for a local chain of grocery stores, and she usually didn't get back until later, like 4 to 6 a.m., depending on the night. Hi, Mom, I said, trying to keep my voice down not to wake up anybody else. You done already? Instead of answering my question, she walked out of the door, turned and began walking down our hallway. I was surprised by the lack of response. There wasn't even an indication that she had heard or noticed me. Mom, I asked. Confused by this, and I poked my head out to see where she was going. She reached the end of the hallway and turned toward the sink in the kitchen. Now when I say hallway, we're talking about more of an access area that connects the master bedroom, the side bedroom next to it, the bathroom, living room, and kitchen together. At most, it's six feet long. I think that's called a foyer. Are you all right? I asked and followed her to the kitchen to find an empty room Confused as fuck, I walked to the cubby where the stove was to see if she was over there, and perhaps slid between it and the wall. I ran to the stairs to the basement to see if I had missed her going down. There was no sight of her. Frowning, I walked to my parents' bedroom, looked in. My mom was indeed there. But she was out cold on the bed, wearing her work clothes. This was common for her to fall asleep wearing her work clothes. Scratching my head, I went back to bed. The next morning, I asked her when she got in. When she said that she had gone home early, a little 
concerned I'd sound kind of crazy, I asked her if she had been wearing her nightgown or work clothes. No, she replied. Why? I then told her about the night before, and when I described the woman to her, she nodded and gave me a knowing smile. That's the woman I told you was still here. I've never seen her again, but who knows? She may still be in the house, even all these years later, keeping an eye on the family that moved into her home. Chaplain Snoo, Order of St. John Chaplain, and demonologist here. Just thought I'd share another story from my professional interaction with the paranormal. As per usual, I can't share case-specific indicators. If they involve a client, sorry. Also, apologies if it seems a little bit boring, but that's the reality of the job. The Dark Room This was an interesting case where someone had a room in their house that they believed was haunted. It was a storage room that they weren't really using. When I asked them what the indicators were, they said they typically heard knocking coming from the room. The room had become incredibly cold and stayed that way. Although it was a small concrete room, so I was initially skeptical about this. And their son had started to have incredibly vivid nightmares and night terrors. He slept in the room with the access to the dark room's door. As far as a professional role was concerned, I figured it warranted at least a blessing and some reassurance. Often when there's nothing paranormal, but people are convinced it is, we do a blessing to settle their nerves and tell them it's been dealt with. So I went and blessed this room. Admittedly, it was strangely cold and dense, considering it was summer. I was a little on edge, but nothing too remarkable happened. When it came to the nightmares, I didn't think too much on this, so just reassured them to tell their son that he would be safe from this point onward. He was at school when I visited at the time. However, that evening I had some incredibly vivid dreams of being hunted by a cloaked figure. Every time I went back to sleep, I was being hunted in different places, but all of the places were older and aesthetic, never modern. I must have had four different dreams that I remember, and more that I forgot. Two in a forest, one in an older city, one on some kind of little farm. This could have been a coincidence, but it's hard to shake this off. I went back to the house and asked to talk to the son and to do another blessing. It's common for us to continuously bless a room, house, or area just to be safe. I was talking to him and asked him to describe the figure in his dreams and his sleep paralysis. He did describe the exact same figure I'd seen. But it was a very common description. Hooded figure, no face. I asked him if he had stopped, or if the knocking had stopped, and he said no. So I went and bought some equipment, and did a more in-depth blessing, with holy water, incense, longer blessing. I also put an iron cross above the door to the room, and placed a Bible in there, open, on Psalm 91. Sorry, Psalm 91. I then blessed the son, the house, and told the parents to contact me if he kept having these bad dreams. I didn't have any more of the dreams. He did, so I went back and kept blessing the room at least weekly. I asked him if it was getting any better. He said it was becoming less and less frequent that he was having these dreams and that the knocking had stopped. The happy ending is, after a few months of blessings and counseling, the dreams seem to go away. This case will always be an interesting one, 
at least for me, because it skirts that line of mundane coincidence versus paranormal event. It may have been completely psychological, and my interventions helped him to develop some resilience and stop having panic-induced recurrent nightmares, but either way, I was just glad it seemed to have stopped. Spooky Kid Story I have a creepy story that I knew some of the members here might appreciate. As always, if you don't believe it was paranormal, that's okay. I just ask that you respect the beliefs of me and others commenting. I came home from a fairly long day. It was late. Probably about 10 p.m. at night. I parked my car in the driveway, which is quite close to the road, and went to go check the letterbox for any mail. As I turned my back to the road, I heard running footsteps and the laughter of, I assumed, children. I thought it was odd because of how late it was, but I turned around to smile and greet them, considering how close they sounded. I also had a dreadfully uncomfortable feeling in my stomach, but I put this down to a psychological anxiety trigger. When I turned around, no one was there, which again I thought was strange, but I shrugged and kept walking. I heard the laughter again. It sounded like the laughter of two children playing together, but ignored it this time. I figured they were somewhere on somebody else's property. I actually assumed visiting our neighbors, because I know our neighbors on both sides don't have children. One is an elderly woman who lives alone, and the other side is just all student flats. As I approached my front door, I heard giggling again, and then the bouncing of a ball. When I turned around this time, there's an old soccer ball on the driveway that I hadn't seen before, and again rationalized it as children who were playing somewhere having accidentally kicked it over. I went back, picked it up, and wandered a hundred meters or so in each direction on the road, looking for the owners and calling out, Hello? I've got your ball. I'm just trying to give it back. I still have the ball. I've left it in the front yard, just in case the owners want it back. But it's been a few days now, and it hasn't been collected. I knocked the doors of the house in each direction, but none of them had children playing at that time. I knocked and asked, Hey, sorry to disturb you the other night at about 10 p.m., but this ball came into our yard. Is it yours? Or were there kids playing at yours that it might belong to? I'm hum harring what to do from here, but I thought I'd post this as I thought that this sub maybe appreciates this kind of stuff. I need to get it off my chest, mostly. They know me, and I genuinely don't know them. My mom and I were picking up our dog at the vet, following a day at daycare, followed by a checkup. As soon as she saw us, the girl working the desk, looked around my age, got really excited, got up from her seat, ran over to us, and hugged me. She exclaimed, oh my god, hi, my name, fill in, hi, Mrs., my last name, when she was... I was just confused. She said, we went to the elementary school together. I played along laughing that I have, yeah, but I kind of have a bad memory. While we talked and on the drive home, I tried to rationalize it. She was probably a kid who was there one year and left the next. It made sense that she knew my mom because she was big in the PTA, especially when I was in grade school helped out a lot with the other kids and the reading groups and such. What I didn't get was exactly why did it warrant a hug? 
When I got home, I couldn't stop thinking about the encounter. To ease my strange feeling, I pulled out all four yearbooks I had from grade school. Each one I scoured my grade, looking for her. She wasn't in any of them. Not that strange. Plenty of kids don't show up for pictures. However, the unpictured kids were listed by name. This girl's name was nowhere to be found. I tried all the other grades. Perhaps she was an advanced student or one of the music classes that incorporated all grades. Nothing. I reasoned that perhaps she had changed her name from what I knew her as. However, she told me her name to try to jog my memory. You'd think that she would have said the name that I would recognize. It's worth mentioning that this girl looked noticeably mixed race. Normally that wouldn't matter, but I live in a small town in Ohio <clears throat> where you can count on one hand the non-white kids who went to my school. It was very notable when a black kid moved to town and attended school for two years before moving again. If I'd seen her before, I'd have thought it'd be memorable. Also worth mentioning, unlike me, my mom has a great memory when it comes to people. And like me, she had no idea who the girl was. And at that age, she would have made a big deal about any girl who made friends with me. Babysitting with ghosts? Right now, I'm babysitting every Monday for my cousin. She has two kids, a six-year-old girl and a three-year-old boy. I know they say children can sense things better than adults can, but today, the three-year-old really freaked me out. We were making bead jewelry, just laughing and having a good time, when the little boy looked up to me and said, Do you know a woman and a little boy follow you? They're behind you right now. As you can imagine, this left me speechless. I kind of ignored it and responded, really, okay, and went back to what I was doing. I texted my boyfriend and told him what my cousin had said, and he said that I should ask if my cousin knew what the names of the entities were, but that he kind of had an idea of who it could be. By the time my boyfriend responded, an hour or so passed. The little boy was down for a nap. My cousin woke up about ten minutes later from his nap, screaming and crying, which wasn't unusual as sometimes he wets the bed, and that's how he reacts. When I asked if he'd peed on himself, he said, A little bit, but I'm just scared. Chicken rooster woke me up. I said, who is Chicken Rooster? And he responded with, the man who sleeps in our room. Bed, my bed. I've only babysat twice, but today is the first time he'd mention anything like this. Anytime I've been upstairs at all, I felt a very heavy presence. When he came downstairs, I asked if maybe he knew what the names were of the supposed lady and little boy following me. He said he didn't know any of the ghosts' names, except for the one sleeping under his bed. His eyes immediately darted to the top of the stairs that connect to the hallway, with very heavy energy. He looked as though he was in a trance. I asked him what he was looking at, and he didn't give me an answer. But then his head and eyes slowly followed down the stairs, as if he was watching someone walk down them. He finally answered and said, All of them are coming downstairs. They can even walk through walls. I wish this little boy was making it up, but the context of his first comment and the seriousness and scaredness in his voice tells me he's very serious. What is following me? And is this little boy okay? That's the end of today's stories. Thanks for supporting us at Paranormal M. 
And, as the narrator, I must apologize for both my gecko and the thunderstorm that is just going crazy outside. Until next time.